Hey, all right, this is part two of the uh, ERC-1155 forging game. Um, in part one, we covered the solidity code real quick. And uh, in this part, we're gonna go into much more detail in the front end. I'll show you how each component was made and where it lives and some considerations there. Um, there are a lot of details there, but you know, I'll, I'll try to cover as much as, as I can. All right, we're back in the code. So uh, what's gonna happen here is that I will open up the game again. So last time we talked about how the header was made and now we're gonna open up the game. And um, one button you'll notice, okay, so by the way, here's the flame, here's that SVG flame. Um, I don't know, it's kind of cool. Um, here's a button where you can re revoke all access to um, because as part of this game, you do need to give access to the forging app to mint and burn tokens on your behalf that you own the ERC 1155. When you give access, I created this button where you can revoke all access again. Okay, so what you can do is and again, this is all public go to my <clears throat> excuse me, go to my GitHub and take a look at all this code. But um, in the in the sorry in the source, um, basically in the home again the home is like the main app that's that's besides i suppose besides the header uh and like the connection logic around like which chain you're on uh this is where the entire front end lives here so these loading statements you're going to see here is like the buttons loading like so when you click mint it'll like enter a loading state uh, until you've signed the transaction and send it out and so on so that's what this is and you can exit the loading again this is a checkbox group that handles the, these checkboxes down here. And um, this is get approval function, which you need approval to access the token. So if I click here, if I click carbon and I trade for this, it's gonna ask me, in fact, I'm gonna reject this and I'm gonna revoke all access. Okay, so you see how I'll click that revoke access and it says revoke permission to access all your NFT. Yes, please, confirm, done, it's revoked. So. What that means is, let's take a look at that logic. Yeah, so, so you look at this as a button that says revoke all access, you see that? That's that top left button. Notice how it's in ghost mode, so like it won't show the full color of it, it'll just outline it like it is. It's red, so that's the danger. And uh, yeah, it's like a size medium. Um, it is controlled by a loading, and you see it disappear in the, in the background, that's because it just re revoked the access. So after that access revokes, it won't keep showing, it'll it'll um, turn off. And that's actually what you see here, this um, logic right here, it says, is current approval true? If so, well, then you're approved. So you should show revoke all access. If not, then just don't show anything. And the way I don't show anything, just, it's just a UI quirk, is that I actually do show a button. It's just that the alpha is zero. So it's actually, um, and you can't do anything with it. Okay, but when you do click the revoke all access, the on click function is right here. So it's an async function that basically, um, yeah, what does it do? It basically just says, uh, set approval for all and it sets it to false. You see that? So it calls, notice this, this is actually very interesting at this point. Uh, we're kind of jumping right in here, but there's this write contracts handle. I showed you that last time how you could, uh, let me show you here again, out here, you have this way of connecting to the provider right here. You see this where you can read the contracts or you can write the contracts. Now, in this case, I'm actually using the signer for both. So it doesn't, in general, you probably just use the provider here, but it doesn't change the fact that it gives me access to write to the contract. So that's what's going on in home. So in here, I have this object just passed in through the props and I go into the particular contact where, contract I want to interact with and write to. So that's the token. And then I do set approval for all. And I uh, basically go in and I get the address and I set it to zero, I set it to false. Um, yeah, and then I'm gonna await that and uh, yeah. Um, I should probably have done a, okay, I should probably have waited, for, uh, awaited that in terms of uh, getting mined and so on. Uh, that's something I'll do in an upcoming uh, video. This, this was kind of like, uh, put it together very fast. 
Uh, and it works like it's like duct tape a little bit together, but it works. But anyway, that's just so you can see how you can write to a contract. And here I'm writing false to the approval. So okay, cool. Once that's done, uh, that's great. Then you can see this title and notice all these rows and columns, right? They just sets up the, the design, the layout of the page. That's all covered in the ant design documentation. There's a gutter between the various elements so that it kind of like spaces apart from each other. Um, it took a little while to get that right. Notice how I'm using a white color with Futura, Futura uh, font, family, font family. And then the raw materials here is a title and notice that this is what goes here. So um, that's pretty cool. I'm using these cards. Again, that's like another thing you can use from this ant design. That's what these things are. And the card is showing uh, an image as, as the cover. And that's what this is. And you can actually click it and it'll expand. So that's how I styled it. Um, you know, I put a little border radius on it. Um, I did uh, like an alpha here. So I made it kind of transparent, the card as well. And uh, what else I did, you know, then I use these rows here to put in some buttons, um, you know, for mint this and trade for this, and it'll also sh show your supply. So notice the mint button, for example, the mint button again has right contract access to forging.mint. And notice how we're also wrapping this in a TX object, that's that transactor object. So this is something that, excuse me, that scaffold ETH gives you access to. Um, and yeah, it just means you can forge and you can forge token zero and so on. And um, what else? Yeah, then you can trade and so on. I'm also making sure that if you trade something, you can trade for itself. So if you click carbon and you want to trade for carbon, it'll tell you in the UI, not the blockchain. It's important. It'll tell you that's the same element. So that happens um, in the logic that like basically what I do is I iterate over the checklist items that the user picked and I want to make sure that I remove uh, the ones that's the same as what they're trying to trade for. And then, uh, yeah, and then it kind of, uh, runs through the through the logic. Okay, so you see here that's the same element down here because it actually checks everything. So like if this list is empty after iterating through this and removing everything that's the same, if it's an empty list, well then that means that they picked the same element. Um, good. What else? What else is on this page? So that was kind of what the card is, and it'll automatically come with this feature of expanding it. Actually, uh, in the card, this is what the um, I believe that is what the, let me see here. What is uh, doing that? Is that the cover? Yes, sorry. That is the cover where the preview uh, is actually the source for the, the clickable event. So you could technically have two different images or maybe a low res and a high res. Notice how actually here uh, to get that image, it actually does pull it from IPFS. So the base UI is what it's using and it just uh, appends this one.jpg. So that is actually something that does sit on uh, a PFS. Where do I get base URI from? I actually read that. Look, look at this. I use the contract reader, which is provided by Scaffold ETH. I pass in my read contracts object I created earlier. And I, I'm saying, hey, I actually want to read from forging and I want to re read base URI. Now in Scaffold ETH, they made some updates recently where like you don't even need to do it like this. Uh, once you read the contract, you can actually interact with it directly, like through its functions. So you can just do forging dot base UI and you don't have to like put it, pass it in like strings like this and it can check whether your syntax is correct. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but that's in another version of, um, you know, basically of ETH hooks now. Okay. So, okay. Wh wh what else? So we have this card. We, I showed you kind of how the layout in terms of rows and columns. Um, the checkbox is, is controlled by a checkbox group, which whenever you click something, it calls checkbox groups on change and it keeps the value checked list, which is just which boxes are checked. And under that checkbox group, I then started, like I then put all these rows and columns and I put these cards, which are these again. So I'm using cards one more time down here. Just, of course they have a little bit of different content. And the point is that the checkbox group now governs all checkboxes beneath it. And you can see, you can, you can toggle the various checkboxes with this value um, key. Yeah, so that's how that was done. Um, what else? What else is interesting here? So yeah, I mean, let's try to mint some stuff. Let's try to mint this wood here, for example. 
So it'll actually open up MetaMask. I'm on Polygon, so this is literally um, cost a little bit of money to do. It says transaction sent. Um, you can change that in transactor. So if you go on to component, components, now I've made a lot of changes to, to a lot of these uh, things here actually. I customized it to this application just because it was fun. But uh, I think helpers transactor, you can go under here. Now I've made some a lot of changes to this. Um, but it comes, you can use it as it is. It's very nice. Yeah, you see down here, this was the one you just saw. Smile outline, I put that smile there and you know, change the notification a little bit. That's what happens when you send a transaction, that little pop-up box to, on the bottom. So anyway, so you can see here in the meantime, we have minted wood. And if I click wood and, you know, I can trade for carbon and it'll first say, hey, you want to trade. A trade again involves a burn event. So it's going to ask for access to all your NFTs. And I can say, yeah, sure, that's fine. Access my NFTs. And you see this transaction sent, that's that transactor object. And what will happen now is a second transaction will pop up, which will then actually perform the trade. So first was access and the other is trade. And what you'll see in a second here as well in the top left is that this re revoke access button will reappear. You see also a little success notification. That's something I built into. So the success notification, let's go back to the code, is something that is showing, let's go back to home. is something something that's showing here message dot success okay so whenever something is confirmed here i have a callback function when i actually this transaction object what it takes is what do you want to call like write and then it takes a callback function so that you can keep getting updates on the state of what is happening to this transaction and in this case i'm checking hey was the update like is it is it defined and is the status confirmed uh, or, you know, is the status one, aka true? Well then great, success. And exit the loading condition of the button. So instead of like doing that little spinning thing, it'll just be a normal button again. It can also fail. Uh, this is actually failed due to the user rejecting the um, signature, like basically rejecting the transaction. So notice that my supply increased to two for carbon because I just swapped wood for that. I can mint iron as well. So look at this, I can mint all these different raw elements, which is kind of cool. So I can confirm that transaction. Now it can be a little bit slow in the sense that, okay, transaction is sent, that's great. And, um, you know, we can even take a look at the at the console. So it's locking all kinds of stuff. It's like, here's my local balance and so on, all this stuff. And in a second, again, it just, sometimes it just takes a little while to, to, to basically mine this block. Notice the revoke all access is active up there. And now I have the iron. Now notice that this button says choose elements show up. So I can actually click iron now. I need to pick at least two to forge a weapon. That's what it says. So I can click iron and carbon. Boom, now I can forge. So this will allow me to forge a weapon. So I can click forge. So that's the forging logic we looked at before in the smart contract. And I can click confirm. There you go, just had to estimate the gas. So now transaction sent. So now I just wait again. It says success. Well, that's good news. And that's it. Now I just wait a little bit and it'll show up. Now in general, of course, you would have to kind of keep the UI telling you that it's uh, it hasn't been mined yet. So the, so the way you do that is you do uh, a wait statement and, and make sure it's mined, right? So um, again, this was put together in like two days, uh, two evenings, if you will. So now I have another shield. Look at that. I can burn a shield, but I have a supply of two. So I can actually burn a shield now, shield now, and I can confirm that burn. The transaction is sent. So notice that this two will become a one um, in a little bit. So it'll say success. And again, you know, ideally it should say success only when it's fully mined. Regardless, um, I know the quirk, so I'm just gonna <laughs> hang out here a little bit. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, this is this was like fun to put together. It was a lot of fun on the scaffold ETH side. It made it very simple and very easy to put together. So definitely feel free to like fork this and you know, do whatever you want. So look at this burn and there's one left. So, and, and, and you can, if you combine three materials together, you can, you can um, basically forge a sword and you can do a crossbow and all this other stuff by forging different elements. So what was this exercise about? It was just about the ERC 1155. It holds all these tokens at once. And I could, if I wanted to set the supply to one for one of them, the total supply. 
So it behaves like an NFT. There's only one ever of them. Um, but I, but for all of these elements, including all the weapons, there's an unlimited supply, but it still holds them under these IDs. So it's like a little bit of a mix, kind of mixes the NFT and the ERC20 concept just a little bit. Uh, and it's very gas efficient because you can uh, mint and burn in batches and call balance off in batches. On the back end, we're calling balance off. I'll show you in a batch way. So balance of, look at this. So to get the tokens, we're actually calling balance of batch and then I'm kind of storing that into an array and that's it and that's how we're loading the front end. So whenever it reloads, when a component updates, it'll, it'll get the balance off, but in a batch way. So you, you save gas. Um, yeah, what else is what what else is there here? I mean, this is just the rest of the components, all the cards and whatnot that can show up. And again, this would certainly have to be broken up into different files, one hundred percent. But there are the different tokens. I try to put some comments there, and that's it. That's really the design. So uh, a lot of work went into just like aligning everything somewhat correctly, like getting the rows, the columns, the spacing, all this stuff together. Um, other than that, it was a lot of fun. Scaffold Eve made a, made it very easy, as I mentioned uh, many times before, um, but uh, it's really worth um, keep mentioning. And uh, yeah, it was fun to, it was interesting, highly recommended to try to implement this thing where, where you have to send write transactions to the state and make state changes and kind of wait for that and see what happens and also do read statements. So this is a, a full on contract and a full on front end Web3 that reads and writes to the blockchain it connects to the to only one specific network we want to be connected to. It uses MetaMask. You can use other wallet providers. Um, yeah, let me know your, your thoughts. Uh, certainly feel free to, to look around. Let me know um, any comments you have. And um, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun to, uh, to put together. All right, so feel free to follow me, Crypto Jesper K. Um, I make a lot of these videos just kind of showing you my journey um, as a blockchain developer to help you guys out, uh, show you some interesting apps and dApps and tools and whatnot. And uh, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, it's great. I learn as well uh, from, from doing this. So yeah, give me a follow uh, if you like the content and uh, feel free to ask questions, but thanks for uh, watching.